As demonstrations for the people of Cuba only grow here in Florida and around the country, changes are being made in the island nation that is still at a standstill. U.S. lawmakers, including the president, are feeling the pressure to do something to help the people there. People in Cuba are protesting the Cuban government for the lack of food and medicine amid the pandemic. Experts say making any changes, though, is not as easy as it seems. New 6's Carolina Cardona is live in Seminole County. We're in about 90 minutes now. A local demonstration is planned. Carolina. Yeah, this new demonstration is set for 630 here at the intersection of State Road 436 and 434 in Altamont Springs. Now, over the last few days, I've spoken with several Cuban exiles who tell me that what they really hope for is for a strong U.S. intervention in Cuba. But experts tell me that it's not that simple and the U.S. would need the support from the United Nations. Biden has to decide whether he wants to pursue a policy of trying to uh, normalize relations with Cuba or uh, take a harder line. But according to UCF history professor Jim Clark, President Biden is faced with a tough decision after being part of the Obama era stance on relations with Cuba. President Obama had opened up uh, traffic. Uh, for example, you could get a flight every day from Orlando Airport to Havana. You could take a cruise ship out of Port Canaveral to Havana. And then President Trump cut that off. A harder line would be what? A harder line would be more economic sanctions. Uh, a harder line would be uh, making it clear that we will open our doors to Cubans seeking freedom as we have done uh, in the past. Uh, so there are a number of things that he can do, but military option is simply not one of them. Despite the Cuban government shutting down the Internet after the uprising, Cubans have still been able to share violent videos, like the ones Senator Marco Rubio tweeted overnight, showing Cuban police and military barging into homes to detain protesters. UCF political science professor Aubrey Jewett agrees a military intervention with help from the U.N. would be difficult, given the embargo the U.S. has over Cuba. It takes a lot because you have to get almost unanimous support, particularly on the Security Council, to take really dramatic action, like with military troops, that kind of thing. Jewett says the majority of countries in the United Nations have voted to support a resolution calling for an end to the U.S. trade embargo on Cuba for 29 years in a row. But he says if protesters on the island continue their fight and their communist government falls, a domino effect could happen. If it was to finally change to become a free and democratic country, that it would put a lot more pressure on some of these other countries that have looked to Cuba as their guiding light, so to speak. Now, Professor Jewett also mentioned that there have been talks about possibly establishing a satellite internet so that the Cubans on the island could freely continue to share those violent images. But so far, he said um, there would need to be also help from high-tech companies. Live in Altamont Springs, I'm Carolina Cardona, News 6.